All right, it's uh, noon now, so I'll just get started in this uh, people rolled in Pennsylvania. Hello. All right, <clears throat> so I'll make it a little bit shorter compared to uh, the talk that I gave and which got interrupted by um, the uh, bad connection from the last time. So in brief, uh, vestibular migraine is the second most common cause of vertigo. In adults, uh, the most common cause is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV. That condition, you know, where you have the crystal that lo that's loose in the, in the ear, lie down, and then it gets uh, aggravates the uh, vertigo. Um, typically, it occurs in women, late 30s to late 40s, in whom there is a family history of migraine and a personal history of migraine as well as uh, motion sickness. So the typical patient that I see is a lady in her 40s, usually, who has a history of migraine headaches. And as she starts to go through menopause, the migraine headaches tend to get better. But the vestibular symptoms, the vertigo, the dizziness tends to come in. Um, if you have dizziness, if you have vertigo, and you have a history of migraine, does that mean you have vestibular migraine? And the answer is no. So most migraine patients have some issue with dizziness or another, and we can test it out this way. And so if you look at this spinny little drum here, most of you will get dizzy if you have a history of migraine. Does that mean you have vestibular migraine? The answer is no. So migraine is a um, big cause of dizziness. A third of the patients have some degree of vertigo. About a quarter of the patients have uh, vertigo and dizziness. Motion sickness is also much more common in patients who have migraine. So what needs to happen is we need to have a connection between the migraine features and the vestibular symptoms, the vertigo or the dizziness, to make the diagnosis of vestibular migraine. So in vestibular migraine, what we want to see is there is the um, attacks of vertigo accompanied by some form of migraine symptoms. Typically, you know, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, uh, visual aura. Nausea and vomiting do not count because anyone who has vertigo, anyone who has dizziness has some degree of nausea and if it's severe, vomiting. Um, the relationship between headaches and the attacks of vertigo can be very variable. Um, you know, you about a quarter to three quarters of patients with vestibular migraine may have vertigo accompanied by some degree of headache. Um, but in general, that relationship between the headache and vertigo is not too uh, consistent. And so I would say, you know, don't be distracted by the lack of a headache to make the diagnosis of vestibular migraine. If you have attacks of vertigo, you have attacks of dizziness, and it's accompanied by, say, light and sound sensitivity, or accompanied by the visual aura of a migraine, then yes, you can have the diagnosis of vestibular migraine. Um, another pitfall that you know we can run into would be the presence or uh, hearing symptoms or ear symptoms rather. So you know you could have ringing in the ears, you can have pressure in the ears, even changes to your hearing. Um, that often leads down the path of Meniere's disease. But it's important to remember that about two thirds of patients with vestibular migraine can have some form of hearing symptoms. So, you know, just the presence of vertigo with ringing in the ears or pressure in the ears does not necessarily mean that you have Meniere's disease. You know, to have the diagnosis of Meniere's disease, I would, you know, look for the presence of hearing loss. So some degree of, you know, asymmetric hearing loss in a patient before I can make the diagnosis of Meniere's disease. And, you know, there's a huge overlap between Meniere's disease and, um, migraines. You know, 50% of patients with Meniere's disease have migraines. Um, you know, another question that often comes up is, you know, what if you're dizzy all the time? If you're dizzy even in between attacks of vertigo, you know, and that is a possibility. So if you think of, you know, chronic migraine, you know, you may have a headache on most days of the month with exacerbations that pop up from time to time. And so, you know, with vestibular migraine too, you could be dizzy all the time. You could be sensitive to all kinds of uh, visual stimuli. You could be dizzy when you go to the grocery store. You could be dizzy when, you know, you look at those hideous carpets in old hotels. Um, 
you know, that's part of the, uh, that can be part of the picture. That does not take away from the diagnosis of vestibular migraines. Um, triggers, we talked about a little bit before the uh, connection cut off about two weeks ago. So big triggers are like, you know, weather changes. Stress is the biggest trigger that we have for migraines and for vestibular migraines. Um, the menstrual cycle can be a trigger for it. Some food triggers can be also, you know, overlap between the two. Alcohol, especially red wine, caffeine, chocolate, you know, that is um, a big thing for a lot of um, patients with vestibular migraine and migraine. Um, the best thing I would advise my patients is to keep track of the uh, food triggers. And so that way you can identify, you know, what triggers your attack. You know, you may have some very unique triggers. Um, I have some patients who say bananas do it for them or avocados can trigger their attacks. So, you know, the thing is to keep track of it, you know, keep an eye on your triggers. They look and see what brings on your attacks and that way you can avoid those triggers, you know, if possible. Um, Treatment. So there are many different treatments for vestibular migraine. A lot of the treatments that are used for migraine also can work really well in patients who have vestibular migraine. Um, you can have the non-prescription, non-pharmacologic stuff like um, vitamin B2, magnesium, coenzyme Q10, butterbur, feverfew, just to name a few. Um, you know, those can work. Um, if those don't work, then, you know, you could go with the prescription medications. There's so many of them. Um, there are more of them being approved by the FDA all the time. Um, you also have the devices that could potentially work. There's the vagus nerve stimulator um, or the gamma core device. Um, our group showed that it can help terminate attacks of vertigo in patients with vestibular migraine. The cephaly device, which is the trigeminal nerve stimulator you put on your forehead, that also can help with uh, attacks of vertigo. Um, the key is to find the uh, one that works for you. Um, how about rescue medication? So triptans seem to work quite well for some of my patients. Um, you know, at times I have to prescribe anti-nausea medications like, you know, promethazine or phenergan. Zofran can be useful if uh, nausea is really bad. Um, in some cases, I may use benzodiazepines like, you know, Valium, um, lorazepam, clonazepam, you know, if needed. Generally, you know, we try to avoid things that sedate the patient too much. But, you know, there are times when you really need to use medications like that to improve the quality of life, to uh, break an attack of um, vertigo. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to open it up for questions, you know, submit your questions. Let me see what I can help answer. So a patient did say that, you know, uh, Krista, dizzy all the time between more severe attacks. Again, very characteristic of uh, vestibular migraine patients. Half of the patients that I see actually have dizziness even in between the attacks. So there's this baseline of dizziness. And on top of that, they have these attacks of uh, vertigo and more severe dizziness.